So one of the things that makes their digestive system so interesting and so different from ours is that we actually take in our food and it breaks down inside our bodies, in our stomach lining and in our gut. But mycelium, and one of the reasons that it makes such an amazing binder is that it actually grows this network all around its food, it encompasses it, and then whilst it does that, it releases enzymes and breaks down this food that we call a substrate, which is its home and its food at the same time. And by doing that, it makes a sort of glue around it, which makes it an amazing material, like this. So it's worth noting that different types of mushrooms produce different um, material properties because of their mycelium strands. <laughs> yeah, there's different types of mycelium. There's some mycelium that might be rhizomorphic. This is more like these beautiful strands. Maybe you've seen some like really cool mycelium photography out there. Um, and this is normally what is shown because it's really, really stunning. Or you can get something more fluffy, kind of like Lion's Mane has a really fluffy mycelium, which sort of resembles the mushroom itself. It's like a big kind of fluffy ball. For my mycocomposites, we tend to use something that is a bit more rigid. So the mushroom, the fruiting body itself is actually much harder than, for example, um, something that you would eat. Like an oyster mushroom. An oyster mushroom. We do use this for making microcomposites, but mainly for prototyping because um, it eats everything. It eats everything, so it grows really quickly. You can form it in really easily and uh, low risk of contamination. But the final outcome of the product or the material that you're working with will be not as rigid. Yeah, because think of the fruiting body or the mushroom as having similar properties as the mycelium, like that actually translates into the mycelium. That is where it's coming from in the end. So when we get a harder or woodier, wood decomposer mushroom, like a reishi or like a, a tree polypore, then that kind of, those kinds of properties we're going to have still in our mycelium. So we're gonna have something that's a lot more resistant, that breaks down a lot uh, more complex carbohydrates and cellulose materials, and it's not as fluffy or spongy as an oyster mushroom or a lion's mane. It's also worth noting that these mushrooms tend to grow slower. Right? Yes. <laughs> so that's why if you wanna do some quick prototyping, recommend oyster mushrooms, but if you want to have a, a more durable material, um, we would go for something more like a reishi. Also, if this is your first time approaching mushroom materials, we really recommend working with an oyster mushroom spawn or mycelium. And we'll explain to you what spawn is a little bit later on in this process. But the reason why is because oyster mushrooms are so good at breaking down so many different types of food sources and they have a quick growth rate which um, covers your substrate or your food source quite quickly. They have less chance of contamination, you're more likely to succeed and if you're more likely to succeed the first time then you'll be more encouraged to keep on trying this process because we're not gonna lie. It's a very difficult practice. There can be a lot of contamination and it's a continuous learning experience, which is kind of part of the thing that's so beautiful about working with these microorganisms. Mm -hmm.